Hello, everybody. Welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, I'm going to be covering how to add video effects to your files within Adobe Premiere. So down here, I've got a few little clips down on my timeline, a few little uh, edits down here. I'm not working with audio right now. We're just going to kind of show the video stuff so there's no audio associated with these files, uh, which is not a big deal. So you want to make sure that you're under the editing layout or in the very least under the effects layout. So if you're going to be adding effects to clips, I really recommend going over to this effects layout. This gives you this little side tab here that gives you quick access to your effects. Otherwise, if you're under the regular editing layout, uh, your effects are going to be found under this tab down near your project window. So this will be easier if we just go to the effects window and have all of our effects right there. Within the effects folder, you have a couple different types of it. I will do a separate tutorial on video transitions. This one we're concentrating uh, specifically on video effects. Now, if there's one that you know that you're looking for, let's say maybe Say like a Gaussian blur, you can type your name up here. You can type in GAU and it will bring up anything that has to do with a Gaussian right there. We've got a Gaussian blur right there. Uh, that, that is the basic uh, Gaussian blur right now there. You've got a couple other ones that are up here as well, uh, which I really haven't experimented with. But let's, let's talk about the video effects that you're seeing down here. Otherwise, you can hit X and clear that out that search and you can arrow down and it will expand these menu, the menu here, and you can go down and search for them under specific folders here. So if you're looking for, let's see, something like adding noise and grain here, I can arrow down and you have a dust and scratches filter, noise alpha, and a, whole, and a couple different types of noise filters that you can add here. But if you find one that you like, in fact, I'm just going to go under blur and sharpen here, and I'm going to grab the one that is a Gaussian blur just to show how this the, these filters work. Once you find a filter, you can you can grab it, you can drag it, over and you can drop it onto the clip that you want to apply the, the filter to. Now when I drop that on there, seemingly nothing happens up here. It looks it looks the same. But when you select a clip here in your timeline, I've added the filter to that. In fact, so you are, when you've added a, a filter, you're going to see this little color change right there. So let's move over to this one here and do the same thing. Drag it on, on here, drag it onto that clip and watch what happens. That little effects filter shows a different color now to show that an effect has been applied. But if you want to access the effect filter that's applied to that clip, now you can select the clip, you can go up to effect controls here. A little process I recommend doing when you select one of these clips that you're going to affect, have the effect controls panel open and have your playhead over the clip. Uh, so you can see the changes that are happening real time to the to the actual clip. So if we go up here now, these are all the native effects that are applied to the clip already the, the, under the motion tab. These ones are go, going to be on every single clip and the opacity and the time remapping are permanent. These ones are permanently attached to it. Uh, to your clip. Any clips, see, let's go to this last one that I don't have any effect filters applied yet. And you can see it's got a motion tab, opacity tab, and time remapping. But if you add anything to it, let's select this clip here, it's going to show up here. We've got a, an effect added right there. And that's the Gaussian blur. And you'll notice the blur, blurriness is set at zero right now. These A lot of these will come in neutral and they're waiting for you to affect them by once again selecting them, hitting the effect controls tab, and having your playhead over the clip so you can see what you're doing. So if I grab the blur here, the blur radius, I'm going to click and drag it to the right. And you can see this getting uh, blurrier and blurrier. And it kind of blurs inward. You can hit repeat edge, edge pixels, which kind of fills it in, makes it look like the whole image is out of focus there. But we can affect our image by doing this back and forth. So let's uh, actually, and I'm going to go over to the effects, uh, little toggle effect on and off. That effect is still applied to my clip, but now it is not active. If you check that little effects marker right there, it turns it off and you can see what your original clip looks like. Let's go find another one like stylize. Some of these are really weird ones. Some of them are very, very helpful and some are kind of kind of weird ones. Let's grab alpha glow and drag it over. Now, one thing you got to be aware of over here on the side, you're going to see, first of all, this is your little plug-in uh, effect icon right there. That is a plug-in and effect. That is a video effect that's going to be applied. Over to the side here, you will find these little icons right here. And on these little icons, you're going to see a couple of different things here. And I'm not seeing them all over here. i got to grab my little tab here. I've got my text kind of increased size, so it's not showing my resolution on my screen. It's hiding some of these things here. But you'll see a few different things. Now, up here, you've got this icon here means it is an accelerated effect. That means it's using your graphics card to do real-time playback. So you, most of the time, you do not have to render these, these effects. If I turn off the effects there and I watch this, it just plays through and it plays real-time and it's applying the effect real-time, which is nice. If it doesn't have that, it's going to want to render your clip. Let's grab color emboss and drag it, drag it on there and it's affecting the color somehow there. I'm not sure what this effect does, but notice it has turned this playhead. If it's yellow right here, this yellow means it can play black real time. If it's red, it means it needs to be rendered. It'll probably, let's see if this plays back fine. I've got a good video card. It paused for a second. So it's, it, it was a little slow reacting and starting to play back there, but it's still 
able with my with my system I'm able to play back real time but uh, if you get in the but sometimes it, it will when it's red it will start chugging you have and start uh, dropping frames so what you can do is just hit the enter key and it will render your effect to the clip it'll build a new video file that it will access with these effects flattened and then once it's been rendered it will be green now the green is means it is reading this new file it has created and playing it back so it's able to play it back real time when it's green and now it has been rendered but the yellow means it is able to play back and process the effects real time and play back real time without dropping frames a couple other things here if you're working with raw footage you'll want to know about this right here 32 bit color if you're working with footage from like a red camera or an alexa camera and you're dealing or canon rock footage you'll want to make sure that these effects that you apply if it does not have this item right there it will not render your files into 32-bit float point and it will no longer be raw data so you want the full color bit, bit depth that you get with raw footage if uh, with these effects the the gaussian color blur does have that but the, the other ones this one will play back real time but does not have that 32-bit float point point. and the last one here is yuv this deals with yuv color spacing uh, most of video that you're bringing in it's rgb but if it is if if you are working with something that's a yuv it means it can quickly convert it to rgb it's a little bit complex so this is not as a major concern as the 32-bit float point and the real-time effect playback right there so I'm going to select this color emboss and delete that. Uh, let's actually turn off my Gaussian blur, but you can apply multiple effects to one clip. You can go under here and find, let's uh, grab Sharpen, which is the opposite of, of a blur there. If we drop that, that one does not have the 32-bit float point. So you got to be a little bit aware of that. This is not raw footage I'm dealing with. This is compressed footage. But if I grab the Sharpen amount and I drag it over, you can see the image sharpening until you can kind of see the grain on the oh my gosh yeah that kind of destroys it but you can see that you can see the effect that this is having here and uh, keep in mind that as you stack effects uh, look at the weird the weird look that I've got from a Gaussian blur first and then the sharpen second so this has these are destructive by the way as you go downwards here so the Gaussian blur the sharpen is based off of the Gaussian blur first so this has been blurred first and then it's been sharpened second and you will get different effects if you do different stacks here if I grab the sharpen put it above the Gaussian blur first then look at the different look that I get it, it sharpened all the RGB channel and we got this weird streakiness and then the blurriness uh, causes kind of a different look afterwards and you get some different funky looking effects depending on how you stack these just kind of keep that in mind and now you can turn off these effects and the blur isn't being affected by the sharpen here so now it's just looking like a regular uh, blur instead so just something to kind of keep in mind Let's bring this one back here. I know that's a, a funky weird effect, but I just want to show you guys how to copy and paste effects. One thing you can do is you can, while you've got this clip selected, you can open the effect controls. I can select all these uh, items here. I can hold down my control and select multiple effects and do control C to copy. Then I can move to the next clip, select it, and do control V as in Victor to paste. And it will paste those effects. Now they are added to this clip as well. Now, if you need to do that to multiple uh, clips, if you need to copy and paste effects to multiple clips here, let's, in fact, let's do this. I'm going to select this clip and delete these effects. I'm going to select them and just hit delete and delete those effects. And I'm going to move to this one here. Let's make sure I've got them removed off of all clips. Okay, no effects on those clips. But you can just do simply do this. You select the clip. Rather than copy the effects up here, you can just select a clip down here. You can select a clip down here and do control C to copy. Now you can select multiple clips. I can zoom out minus... Here, I hit my minus key to zoom out, and I can select all the other clips that I want to uh, apply the, these effects to, and I can right-click on these selected clips and say, Paste Attributes. Paste Attributes is going to bring up this uh, window here, and I just want to paste the effects. So I'm going to uncheck these three ones, Motion, Opacity, Time Remapping, and we're just going to paste the effects. And you can even tell it to do just the Gaussian Blur, or you can do it, do all effects. And you hit OK, and it has now applied those effects to everything. Now, I don't know why you'd want your image looking quite like this, but I'm just kind of showing how to stack the effects that you can apply multiple effects. And some of these you're just going to have to go through and uh, and experiment with. If, and other ones, you can look them up if you're trying to do a very specific, uh, interesting look to it. You can add these effects. But once again, I'm going to delete those effects. Once again, if we want to add a certain, let's go well, let's go to Solarize here. I'll grab that and drag and drop it on. And already it's added this effect, but you can grab your threshold and play with this and get different looks by solarizing it here. And that's basically how you affect it. Now, one thing to keep in mind here, watch this. As I move my mouse over another clip, let me remove these effects. I'm going to say remove attributes and I'm going to remove 
adjust the effects on this thing so it clears it out and looks like normal. But watch what happens if I have this selected and my playhead's not over and I'm messing with it. It looks like I'm trying to affect this clip here, but nothing's happening. But keep in mind it is affecting the selected clip. So have your playhead over it and uh, have your effects controls tab open and you can sit there and move these effects around and get different looks. And once again, this is not a real-time playback one. It doesn't have the little plug-in thing there. So you have to hit enter to render it, render the effect to your clip, and then it will turn it green and be able to play it back real-time. Well, those are the basics. That, that is the basics of effects there. If you have any questions, please let me know. And I will be getting back. I will be talking about some masking and some audio effects later on in, in uh, uh, episodes to follow.